from the angle of this lens, it looks like I'm observing a ball of fried chicken currently. Ryder. He's alive. It's a, a lazy Saturday for you. Why are you so tired, man? Why are you so tired? How do I wake up? So what's going on guys? Welcome to the video. We haven't officially checked in since the Austin Marathon ended. So after the Austin Marathon, I took a, a complete week off of all running, which was difficult. Like I felt, I felt like I had all this bowled up energy after, after running so much previously. So an entire week off, it felt really good. Let my hamstrings, my quads um, kind of just rest, recover, my whole body recover. And I focus on a lot on um, mobility and stretching and the compression boots and the ice bath in the meantime. And then uh, last week I started training again for the Oregon, the Eugene Oregon Marathon, which is the end of April. So I'm currently on that training block feeling really solid. And then today I have a four mile recovery run, just very chill. And tomorrow is an 18 mile long run, but I'm about to hop in the ice bath. Just got done traveling like a crazy amount this past week. I was on five flights. I went to California for a podcast and meet with manufacturers. And then um, yesterday I was on uh, Fox and Friends. So we were in New York City for like 18 hours. Came back last night, hit an eight mile run. Now the ice bath is much needed. Just that shock to wake up the body. I'm also probably going to change out the water in this thing today. The way I do is I throw a sub pump in here pump out all the water and then refill it after I, I wipe down all the surfaces. So the water is currently sitting at, I don't know if you guys can see this, it looks about 36, 36 degrees in this wonderful homemade masterpiece. Oh yeah, just always feels good to get back in here. And three, two, one. This one is cold. One of the things I've realized since, since running and with a week off of running in after the marathon. And it hit me last night when I got back from traveling from New York and from the airport went directly to the warehouse for an eight mile run. So it was a two mile warm up run, a four mile tempo run at a 625 minute per mile pace and then a two mile cool down run. That first like 20 feet of running, it was almost like I could like breathe and live again. It's hard to explain. Like I can't imagine my life anymore without any type of running. Because like you go from a travel day, you're sitting on airplanes, you're, you're sitting in airports, and then when I can just like open up and go for a run, it's like breath is, like air is like breathed back into my body and it opens up and endorphins are released and it feels so good. Part of that might be due to the fact that I'm currently reading Born to Run, which is things I'm thinking about all the time right now. And what an excellent way to kick off. Saturday morning, three minutes in the ice bath. If you guys haven't hopped on the ice bath train yet, I highly recommend it. If you have like 400 extra dollars sitting around to build one, do it. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I am personally a spray deodorant fan. Just preferred over stick. And when we were leaving for New York City yesterday, TSA took my deodorant, and I had to wear Steph's women's deodorant on Fox and Friends. So now we're good. Now before today's four mile easy run, I'm gonna do a body weight workout, which I'll show you what I'm doing. So I'm gonna mix up one scoop of blackberry lemonade endo pump for some of that blood flow moving to the muscles, and then one scoop of sour watermelon flight. So I'll mix both of these in this pro mix shaker right here. Now over the next eight weeks, I am not doing any resistance training. It's all gonna be body weight stuff, and I'll talk about why but I still like taking some pre and some pump before these workouts. 
Now, while this pre-workout kicks in, let's talk about the plan over the next eight weeks leading into the Eugene, Oregon Marathon. So I'm on a training program right now that is seven days a week running. There is one optional running day, which is actually today, Saturday, which is a slow zone two recovery run. Now with this training platform and program that I'm using, it's through Training Peak still, um, it's more aerobic base building. So there's a lot of zone two running just to get mileage in. There's still interval training, there's still tempo runs, but it is more, a lot more zone two um, higher mileage than I was previously doing, which is something I need to work on and improve. So getting those miles in. Now, even though I'm running seven days a week, um, some of those runs being zone two, slower, base building, they're not very impactful. So it's not really breaking me down. I have the ability to get some mileage in at, at, a, at a lower heart rate and still improving, which I'm, I'm really liking so far. I think it will have massive improvements to my run time uh, and my ability to sustain uh, a heart rate sub three hours, which is the goal, obviously, to qualify for Boston, which is the goal. Um, so that's the plan I'm on right now. And I'll talk more details as we progress over these next eight weeks on this program. In terms of like weight training or lifting in the gym, I still want to train. I still want to you know, um, get some blood moving to other muscles other than my legs running just because I love it. I love the gym. But I'm not going to be doing any resistance training. It's all going to be body weight. Um, because I naturally hold a lot of mass. I mean, after building muscle over the last decade, I have a lot of mass up top, which is slowing me down on some of these runs. So in order to reduce some of that mass or lose some of that mass, um, I'm not going to be lifting any weights. It's all going to be body weight. So my typical workout is uh, 100 push-ups, uh, about 40 to 50 pull-ups, um, 40 to 50 dips, and then core training, hanging leg raises, cable crunches, GHD sit-ups, uh, and I'll do that maybe four to six days a week. And that's the plan as of right now. So we gotta keep building that aerobic base, have to get faster, lose some more weight to qualify for Boston. And I present to you my shoes for the next race. These are the Nike Zoom Vaporfly Next Percent. I wear a 12.5. Let me show you these right here. I'm pretty excited to run in these. I haven't tried them yet, but these are what I'm gonna race in next based off many, many recommendations by you guys. So I appreciate it. And um, pink was actually the only color wave they had left. And actually my size was the only one they had left. This local shop around here. But I am quite excited for these. So we got Joe behind the camera. Joe probably hasn't been behind the camera for a solid two years. Yeah, it's been a while. It's, it's been, been a while. A but uh, usually it's Jordan, but it's a Saturday. Jordan's with his wife and his dog right now. But I'm training, so I'll walk you through what I do. Like I said, body weight stuff. So I'm gonna start with hanging leg raises. I'm gonna do four sets. Each set is pretty much um, close to failure to like really feel a burn. I'll show you what I do towards the end. So hanging leg raises, you wanna control the movement, and I just start at the bottom here, and then right up with the core, controlling the whole way through. So I'll probably do around 15 to 20 reps of hanging leg raises. And then when I'm done, when I'm like burning out, I'll hold it here, and I'll do an L sit for as long as possible. Just work on your breathing, holding that until you can't hold it any longer. So that is the first movement. Hanging leg raises. Second movement is cable crunches. Now, with all my core stuff, it's very controlled, very deliberate. Uh, I'll do the whole stack. I'll do 200 pounds, um, and I'll do, let's say, 15 to 20 reps. So I'll hold the weight right above my the top of my head, my ears, and I'll just bring the top of these ropes down to my knees. Try to touch my elbows to my knees, and when I get to the bottom there. Hold that contraction and release. And that is exercise number two. Now a GHD. If if your gym doesn't have a GHD, I would recommend to the owner they get one. Cause I can use this for a lot of different things, especially core. Um, so I'll either do the full GHD sit-ups 
or you can grab a weight. You can do weighted, just like, like sit ups right there. Um, but I'll show you like, I'll come back. Now I won't use any of my arms. I'll go the whole way back, touch the ground, or you can do pulse ups. You can do so much on a GHD. But I'll hang out here for quite a while. Next up is push ups directly into dips. Now I will do four sets of 25. Uh, sometimes I'll do, I'll do more. But what I like doing is I find, like finding a song. I put a song on where I can do push ups to the beat. So like you just follow that beat and do your push ups and knock out your 25 and then directly into body weight dips. So hop right into it. I'll knock out between 10 and 15, just like so. And then into pull-ups, last movement. So I always start with core, then I go into push-ups, dips, and I end with pull-ups. So I'll typically do like my first set will be as many reps as possible, and my follow-up sets will be between 10 and 12 reps. So I'll knock out as many as possible right here. All right, so here we go. workout all body weight stuff for now come on right right come on get up there go good boy you ready Ready. all right you ready you ready you want to run with me you want to run four miles with me so next up on today's agenda is a four mile recovery run uh and in training peaks on my program it's set very slow uh, zone two, so I'll probably run between like an 8.30 and nine minute per mile pace. And I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna take this slow. Uh, tomorrow is my 18 mile long run. And uh, this is kind of just like a recovery run moving into that. My total miles for this week is 57 miles. So when I started marathon prep after the Ironman in November, 57 miles of running, I would feel the effects of that physically after that week. I'd feel a little beat down, tired, but now, as I've made improvements and, and progressed through endurance, 57 miles uh, in a week like doesn't really feel like anything. I feel, I feel very solid still. So I've made improvements, but one of the biggest things I'm focusing on, and like I've talked about, is like these zone two slower runs. There's a lot of volume, but a lot of it is like these slower runs getting miles in. So today is kind of just to get some miles in and, and at a slower pace in preparation moving into tomorrow's long run but they're absolutely essential. I think one of the biggest mistakes I've made the past like decade of my life, and I've talked about this a million times, I can't emphasize it enough, is I haven't focused on zone two, like true zone two running enough. I think a lot of people have this problem. They go out and run, they run too hard, and it makes running suck, uncomfortable, and hard to improve to build that aerobic base. So today, I'm gonna take it slow in preparation for tomorrow's 18 mile long run. So one of the things I've talked about working on is increasing my cadence so the beats per minute that my feet hit the ground and it's been like 169 170 I want to get it closer to 180 so what you can do this is what I'm doing I'm actually listening to a metronome or you can make a playlist and all the songs in the playlist have the beats per minute that you're trying to run to. So my metronome right now is set to 172. If I'm starting at 169, 170, but I wanna to get to 180, well, you can't just jump. It's a massive jump. It's difficult. So do like a change of 
one to two beats per minute a week and you'll slowly increase your cadence. So that's what I'm working on, on these slow recovery runs. So back home and I'm going to walk you through what my next week of training looks like based off my plan. Um, I did this all of last prep and I'm gonna keep doing this next eight weeks just to keep you guys informed of what I'm gonna be working on. Uh, like I said, today is Saturday, tomorrow is Sunday is an 18 mile long run. Monday is a five mile easy aerobic run. So just zone two. If I say it's uh, aerobic run easy, it's pretty much just trying to get miles in. Um, Tuesday is a 10 mile run. Six of those miles is tempo. So two miles easy, then six miles at a 635 minute per mile pace, then two miles easy. Wednesday is a six mile easy aerobic run. It's to build mileage. Thursday, it's my midweek longer run, eight miles uh, at a 650 minute per mile pace. Friday is eight miles, uh, two miles easy. And then let's see, two, four, let's see, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so it's two miles easy. And then um, four miles tempo run. 635 minute per mile pace, two mile cool down. Saturday is a four mile aerobic recovery run or off day, but I'm gonna run, I'm gonna recover. Um, and then Sunday, next Sunday is a 20 mile long run. Um, so that is, that's the plan for the next week. Now the only time I'm including nutrition during a running uh, during a run is my long runs on Sundays. So I will in include um, goos, electrolytes, my, my typical race plan nutrition, I will incorporate into tomorrow's run. And in tomorrow's run, I'm actually wearing uh, the Nike Vaporflies, next percent. I'm wearing those for tomorrow's run. So that's what's going on. That's what we're working towards, as you guys know, the Boston Qualifier, it's gonna happen. We're gonna keep working, working towards it. The thing is, I just gotta keep working. I know the plan, I know the strategy, I know what I need to improve on, just gotta keep working. So I'll see you guys in the next video.